This week's expert tip comes from my dear friend Ron Atwood, the foremost African art expert, most knowledgeable person I know about all African art. Can you please explain to us the two statues you brought in today? I can, Michael, and thank you for having me here. What I brought today for everyone to enjoy is a set of what they call primordial couples from the Senefo people of the northern part of the Ivory Coast. And what some of you are going to immediately see here is a comparison which is apt to Giacometti and Giacometti's famous sculptures in so many important collections. And here you have an inspiration that in fact did impressed Giacometti, it's not fictitious. He was using African art in much of what he created, especially his sinuous and tall figures. And that's what you have here. It is an extraordinary pair from the late 19th to early 20th century. And as you can see, we have the female slightly taller on the left and the male slightly shorter on the right. And that's because among the Senefo and many Africans, even though they're patrilineal, there is the honoring of the mother and she takes precedence in the sculpture by being taller than the male. Women love that. That's but great. this is what's going on here and it is an extraordinary couple with that mottled finish that comes from libations with human blood, it creates the encrustation. And that's what Giacometti was replicating you might say, in his own sculpture. What makes these distinguish is that they're not tourist pieces. They are, in fact, very high-level works of African art. If put on the auction block, we're talking about somewhere between forty and $60,000 for a good set like this. And that means that the kind of thing that I have at atwoodafrica.com, if you don't mind my giving myself a plug, you will see that I'm appealing to those who have a genuine collector's spirit which you have, Michael, okay. with your connoisseurship of tapestry. Thanks to you. Yes. All right, so there's a little bit of Giacometti for you to see. I'm also going to bring in now another figure. And some of you who are familiar with the work of uh, Miro. Miro. In his early stages, Miro was a surrealist. And the surrealist movement was about making dreams manifest and that's what you see here it's not realism but it's a lyrical figure and there will be a comparison to the one that Miro created not a direct relationship we can't say that Miro was inspired by this what is called a mossy doll but there is the image of one of his early 1934 surrealist images and you would swear you were looking at this doll. Okay. It's that close. So this is the fascination for many right now who are buying at high levels of African art. There are many who are collecting both museums and private collectors and they wish to see the comparison between the moderns who were influenced by African art and the actual African art, which they now want to put next to their very important modern paintings. But the most important thing here is to recognize that African art stands alone. It doesn't it need does. to be celebrated simply because it inspired modernism. It stands alone now in the auction place and is now achieving record prices of over a million dollars for extremely select pieces. Thank you very much. I appreciate it as always and looking forward to have you again in another episode. I'm looking forward to that Thank too, you. Michael. Appreciate that.